It is Monday, April 8th. It is officially, I'm not even going to say spring game week. It's live show week. If you are in or around Columbus, coming in town this weekend for the spring game, or just hanging out, you ain't got no job, you ain't got nothing to do, Yogi's on hard road. Doors open at 11. We're going to be there for our spring game kickoff live show, and it's going to be a banger. I've already had dozen, a couple dozen people reach out and say they're coming in town for the game. They're going to come a day earlier. They're going to wake up early and drive, and they will be there. So I'm telling you right now that obviously the show starts at noon like we always do. Doors open at 11. Get there early to make sure you get a seat. That's just my my little uh, disclaimer. If you want a seat at the live show, you, I, just just get there early to make sure. And we'll be there kicking it. Do, do the live show. We'll hang out the rest of the, you know, the rest of the afternoon, late afternoon, whatever you want to call it. Have a couple drinks. Kick it with the Army. We're excited for it. And it's also an eclipse day. And everybody in Ohio is acting like fucking Armageddon. Like this is the wildest shit in the world. Chris has his glasses on. Can you see the lights? Yeah. <laughs> Chris see, is ready. I can see how bright my future is. You've never, <laughs> you've never seen somebody so anxious about a fucking the moon than Chris is right now. Oh yeah, I was tripping last night. Chris was freaking out. I was freaking out, bro. It's about to be a purge in Akron, bro. I'm not ready. Uh, I, I guess I'm excited for it. I, I feel like there was a almost full eclipse when I was like a kid, and I thought it was the dumbest thing ever. It lasted like three minutes, and I was like, that was stupid. Why do we make a big deal out of that? But I will reserve my judgment until we watch it today. So we'll see. Maybe it'll be really cool. Bro, all the traffic people are saying is about to be gridlock traffic on the highways. Dog, I'm stressed. Chris is stressing. But he got that Tesla. Put it on auto drive. Kick back. Put your glasses on and look at the eclipse. I'm about to be driving 80 on the shoulder. So watch out. <laughs> hey, watch out for Chris. He got the new whip. Got the new glasses. He's ready. Pedestrians, watch out. <laughs> watch out. Watch out for the Drew Mobile. It's coming. Yeah, Drew's clues. Drew's <laughs> zooms. <laughs> But we had a nice little weekend. We had some buck. So we have some Buckeye football updates. It's funny, Chris. It's funny. The beat is changing their tune a little bit. Yeah, we're we're definitely starting to get off the Will Howard surefire starter thing right it's, now. It's been weird. Mm, that's so crazy. Austin Ward played golf with Devin Brown in a simulator, and now he's on the graphic for the show today. Chris told me yeah. it's funny. How everything we said all spring is starting to come to fruition. And those that called us liars are starting to fall the fucking line, isn't it? But the battle's not done. The battle forges on. And we're going to talk about the updated quarterback battle. And also my opinion of what's going to happen, which and is all just projection. Like we're approaching the end of spring. So like there's got to be answers for somebody at this point. Well, it's like everything else, right? There's a winner and a loser. Now it might not be much. By much, it might be a small margin. But at the end of spring, the staff is going to sit down and say, Devin Brown, Will Howard, who won the spring? And that might not be indicative of who the starter is. That might not – they might not make a call. Well, they're, I, they're not going to make a call. But someone has to win. It's not a dead heat. Someone was slightly better. <laughs> it's like in the NFL when they get the ties. It's a tie. It's a tie. What? No, it's not. Mm -hmm. All these analytics that they track. And Ryan's a freak about analytics. I'm talking – Completion percentage, deep ball percentage, like turnover worthy throws, like all the stuff they track. Someone won and someone lost. Yeah. So we want to talk about who's winning we do. because outside of Wednesday, spring's pretty much over. I know everyone's excited for the spring game, but it's pretty much over. That was long, long intro kind but of dope. How was your weekend though? We usually do that. My weekend was really good, man. It was nice out. You see, I got a little, a little, I got sun kissed a little bit. My son had, so Cam has had a micro fracture in his back. He hasn't been able to do anything. He'll get cleared this Thursday. And, um, it's been – so he had a baseball game. He didn't play. He was just kind of the bat boy hanging out until he gets cleared. He can't do anything. But we still went. Justine and I went, took the kids out. It was sunny, like 70 degrees. And I forgot you can get sunburned. Like, that's that's where we're at in the weather turning. I forgot that the sun can burn my white ass. And so I was out there for like three hours. And I came home. Justine was like, damn. And I look in a mirror. In a mirror, I'm like, red as hell. I shaved my head today. Where like, you are glowing today. I'm just saying I shaved my head. It like ripped my scalp off. Oof. It was brutal. Then I got in the, we got in the sauna and it was like the heat hit. Oh man, it was, I forgot. I forgot what it was like to get sunburned, but we're here. The weather's turning high of 74 today. It was a great weekend. How about you? Bro, the first time I got sunburned, I thought I was going to die. Like I was like telling like Michele and Haiti to like call my mom and like tell her it's over. I thought I got bit by, I thought I had malaria actually, because I just like couldn't stop sweating. And they're like, <laughs> brother, you just, 
you're just sunburned. <laughs> so I, I used to think white people were just being dramatic, and then I learned the, the hard way. Well, um, I, bet you, I bet you that sun in Haiti hits different. Oh, dog, it was crazy, bro. Like, I was crying, bro. I couldn't eat. <laughs> I think I probably was sun poisoned, or I'm just uh, no tolerance. But no, dude, I had a good weekend, man. My uh, my sister that lives in Atlanta came up, and she was, she was around. Um, but she took the kids to Castaway Bay, and so, like, it was just me in an empty house over the weekend, bro. I didn't know what to do. Well, that's usually when you throw a rager. No, I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> no. No, but not, dude, I had a good weekend, bro, but I'm, I'm glad good. to be back at work and, uh, and and talking about, you know, Ohio State football because. Amen. Amen to that. All right, right, let's get this thing started. While you're here, like the video. Comment down below who you think is going to or did have a slight edge in the quarterback battle. I need a Devin Brown or I need a Will Howard, because there's only two options. If you listen to someone that says someone else, they're fucking lying. So pick one, comment down below who you like, who you think has a slight edge thus far through spring. Lukey, let them know what time it is, Bubba. Let's get to the show. Let's get to the show. Let's get to the show. It is, what is what you call it, live show week? So make sure you come to the live show. And again, get live show early. week. We got bourbon in Baltimore. tomorrow. I, I'm, I'm, I'm debating. So you can comment in the chat. Do we want to have kind of one last Will Howard breakdown, kind of to preview the spring game, or do we want it to go nostalgic? Do you want to do the 2014 Ohio State Bama game? Just comment down below what, what you what you want to break down on Bourbon and Ball this week because we're going to have the spring game next week. Then we're going to get into the offseason kind of football intelligence series. So I'm excited for it. Bourbon and Ball tomorrow and obviously uh, Eclipse today. Hmm. Okay, Bourbon and Ball tomorrow. That's interesting that you're leaving up to, to vote for the, between those two. Yeah, because I got I got both loaded up in a queue ready to go. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm down for either one. That's real. The issue is if you like if you like draw a Will Howard game out of the hat and it ends up being like the Oklahoma State game or like another game, people are going to be like, oh, like Zach's just like pushing a narrative. No, I, I think I can't remember. I got four games and I and I, I tried Maybe to Texas pick, Tech was like one of his. Yeah, I tried to pick some some of his better games, some of his worst games, mm -hmm. so we can break them all down. I think we're 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 one in. And it was a good game. He had a couple bad throws, but he played well. Yeah. It was promising. Like, it got me excited for the if he's the starting quarterback in Columbus. But it also showed some pimples. That it, It's all about reality on this platform. We're not trying to jerk off Buckeye fans to get clicks and views. We're here to just talk about reality. If you don't like it, go watch every other show that just sits there and strokes Brutus's cock all day. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you were about to go somewhere really yeah, dark. I was about to go somewhere crazy. <laughs> dark, no pun intended. Did I just throw this up here just because it is Justine. Um, Luke and Lily love Chris rocking the glasses. Hyped. They're so excited, dude. Lily, and you know, school's building up. Lily, Lily came home from school. He's like, Dad, we have to go buy glasses. Da -da -da. Like, go. She's so into it. So I got on Amazon, ordered glasses, and like, this is going to be a big deal. People are having watch parties. I saw Yogi's is having a watch party. Revelry's having a watch party. Like, damn, anything for marketing. We're having a watch party show. I think if you go to Jenny's, they've got, like, the ice cream place. They've, I mean, it's nice outside today. What, 72 today? 74. Hi, 74. Excuse me, two degrees. I wasn't a meteorologist or a math major, but I think they have glasses. At least that, the, that's where these are from. Listen, anywhere you want to go in Columbus right now has glasses and is having a watch party. I saw Yogi's special is on a galaxy bomb and a blue moon. So you can get, Creative motherfuckers. You're going to get people getting wasted and looking at it. We're not supposed to look at I'm it. I'm looking guys. right at it. <laughs> Zach's going to come in tomorrow looking like Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Um, for starters, your boy, Morgan Wallen, a char charged with a felony for throwing a chair from a sixth-floor rooftop bar, trying to create his own eclipse. You know what? He's a rock star. Let him have it. I mean, if it was Kid Rock, would you be surprised? I mean, I know Morgan Wallen's kind of more like the genuine country guy, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But – He's a rock star. I mean, really, really fucking dumb. You can kill, I mean, kill somebody instantly. Mm -hmm. a, a chair off a sixth floor balcony? That hits someone in the head, they're fucking cooked. Done. So really dumb. He deserves to get in trouble for it. But he's a fucking rock star. Does that sound like a felony? Is that a felony, though? That doesn't I mean, sound like a felony. Maybe, maybe I don't know. It didn't sound dude, like a felony he to me. He could have hit someone and killed him. Yeah, yeah, I got you. But it's like, like is, like, is speeding a felony? I can't be. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, it can be. You're right. I guess it just didn't sound like a felony. Like of all the felonies to get, like, what do you? Oh, what are you in the bank for? But like, why? Like, I've I've partied my ass off a, a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I have been in Nashville. Justine and I were just there like four months ago. I mean, we got lit, drunk as hell, had a blast. All the bars, degenerate shit. Like, it was so much fun. Never once did I think. I should launch a fucking chair off the top of this roof. <laughs> yeah, that's like, actually that's actually insane. You know what I mean? Like, what makes you think? Hmm. And I'm I'm not even an anybody like Morgan Wallen. Yeah, like you probably you got a lot going for you. You probably shouldn't do that. And why doesn't he have people there to make sure he doesn't do that? 
Yeah. Like, that's what I have a Justine for. If I'm going to do something stupid, well, for a number of reasons, but one, she'll be like, no, what the fuck are you thinking? And I won't do it. I guess I want to know, like, who threw the first chair. <laughs> you know? I just want to know where his people were. Doesn't he have yeah. security? He's at a Nashville bar. He certainly had security. Who let him throw the chair off? <laughs> and that's a dumb son of a bitch right there. Um, here we go. Steven Strasburg, he's retired. He signed a $240 million contract in 19, but only threw 530 pitches in the big league after that. That's, Zach, that's an all-time heist right there. Yeah, I mean, that's good for him, man. You went 500 grand a pitch? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll take it. That's, that's, that's the problem with these inflated salaries in sports. Right. And you've seen it a ton. Michael Thomas, Ezekiel Elliott. I mean, it happens all the time. Yeah, Guys they, sign a massive deal and then all of a sudden they fall off and you're like, damn, that's a bad deal. But this one is wild. Oh, this is yeah, this wild. Is wild. And I believe he hit the threshold to where the uh, the team insurance wouldn't pay for it. They they still they have to pay for it, which is makes it even more wild. I mean, Steven Strasburg for me, it's it's wild hearing him retire because he's one of the guys like in the baseball world, like I remember when he was like number one overall pick, like he was, you know, boy wonder the supposed to be a super megastar pitcher pitched really, really well. And, but for him to get that deal in 2019 and then hang it up is. Yeah. I mean, it's, it can happen. It can happen in yeah. sports. Guys fall off, guys get hurt guys, you know, they hit their peak and then it's, it's, it's a fast crash down. You give a guy $245 million and there's mm -hmm. a chance he's like, I'm, I'm good. I, I mean, am really good. Agent Hall of Fame right there. Um, women's college basketball championship over the weekend. South Carolina completes their perfect season. Did wire to wire. I did. I, I did too. Did. I absolutely watched that. I watched that game. Um, Caitlin Clark was, bro, when, when that game opened up and Caitlin Clark started going stupid, I was like, she's the oh, chosen one. Yeah, she And then is. I saw Skip Bayless said he would draft Caitlin Clark over Bronny. <laughs> <laughs> which which was one of the funniest things i've ever heard bro. is he wrong <laughs> bro it was just funny bro because i didn't think i like of all the places to take things i never would have took it there yeah he just he he loves you know that's that's a clickbait thing to yeah. say but but it but it also is like okay let's have a debate about it of course. Like, that's why. But, again, Caitlin Clark, obviously, Iowa does not get the win. Um, South Carolina gets the win. Wire to wire, great season. It was a good game to watch. I mean, I thought it was going to get out of hand in the fourth quarter. Um, Caitlin Clark hit a couple threes. And they pulled a little bit closer, but obviously South Carolina ended up being South Carolina much. is so good. They're it's so like good. UConn. UConn's winning tonight, right? Mm -hmm. we, we all agree. I mean, UConn's ridiculous yeah. in men's basketball. Just like South Carolina was in women's basketball. I mean, they were – they didn't get the shine because they didn't have the Caitlin Clark name notoriety, but – Holy shit, are they good? Right, and and Don Staley, she's she's awesome. Um, I, I did take some issue with some comments she had over the weekend, but oh, I, I big liked, issues with it. I liked afterwards her saying, "I want to personally thank Caitlin Clark for lifting up yeah. our sport." At a time where Caitlin Clark is what do they call it, a viper pit, like getting a lot of odd hate, a lot of um unwarranted hate from WNBA players talking about realities coming. Like, <laughs> damn, just let her have her moment. I thought that was good for for. For, uh, for Coach Daly to say that afterwards. I think it was awesome because it's mm -hmm. true, right? Caitlin Clark has elevated women's basketball because she was such a superstar in college. I thought it was awesome for her to say. I thought it was great. I do think it's a little fucking hypocritical that you're going to talk about uplifting women's sports when days ago you were talking about letting dudes with dicks play in women's sports. Like, that's fucking bullshit. So, shout out to Dawn Staley for saying the right thing yesterday. Yeah. But she, at the same time, two days before was belittling and diminishing women's sports by saying that, I don't know, if you think you're a girl, you should be able to play in girls' sports. No, the fuck you shouldn't. And if you truly care about your players, you would not want LeBron James with a wig dunking on him, putting his nuts in their face. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to cop a plea for her just real quick. And I'm only going to cop a plea for her because I, I, when I was watching her, I don't think she believed what she was saying. I think she was so paralyzed by cancel culture. Yeah, but all she had to do was just say, I'm not going to comment on that. Yeah, which like, that was a wild thing for that reporter to ask, too. It is. I mean, they, they set her up. I get it. Def but at the same time. They set her up. She didn't handle it well, my yeah, opinion. Yeah, conviction. You have to have mm -hmm. conviction. Do you really care about your, your athletes? You don't believe that dudes should be playing women's basketball then. If yeah. you care about your women's basketball players. So, I, I just... It was tough for me to say. I thought it was awesome. She mm -hmm. said that about Caitlin Clark. Very, very classy. Very true. Very appropriate. But coming two days after she said the other bullshit, I'm like, eh, get off my screen. You already discredited yourself. Um, Dog, I think I might actually bet and watch WNBA next year. They got uh, Sabrina. They got Caitlin Clark. They got Angel Reese. I mean, I'm I'm going. I'm going. Better than the, the NBA. 
Uh, okay, calm down. It is. But I'm going for the Caitlin Clark <laughs> realities coming to her because I'm team Caitlin on this. And I hope she just fucking kills it. Yeah, I want her to I want her to put 30 on that girl's head top, man. That shit had me tight. I'm just saying, and the WNBA has a lot in a lot of investment. Mm -hmm. and if Angel Reese comes in and Caitlin Clark comes in and they're superstars in WNBA, what do you think that's gonna do for the league? Everything. I don't even know another WNBA play, NBA player except for the one dude who was locked up in Russia. What's his name? Brian Greiner. <laughs> this is a great stat on Caitlin Clark and the ridiculous season she had. She's had more points this season than Iowa scored in her entire time. Iowa football scored in her entire time um, as an Iowa Hawk. Her entire time as a student in Iowa. She scored more points in one season than they scored the whole career. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I mean, 1,028 points for old uh, Brian Ferenz. She had 1,234 points. Really lapped it by a mile. So shout out, shout out Caitlin Clark. And honestly, I've never bought a WNBA jersey. If I did, I'd probably buy Sabrina's first, Caitlin Clark's second. That's, I think, where I'm at. I'm going to buy that girl from LSU's jersey. Uh, Haley Van Lith is yes. currently in the portal. I know. Someone said that they Come would, be a Buckeye. Someone said they would apply to do laundry for the Ohio State women's basketball team if she. Uh, we will give her an NIL deal. She, <laughs> can, she can do a, a show. Yeah. She, okay. That'd be that'd be super dope. Dennis to basketball. Who you got tonight, bro? UConn or Purdue? I'm taking UConn. UConn's too <laughs> good. You, bro, and I fucking hate. Yeah, Zach I was gonna say, bro, you just you hate that dude, bro. I, I can't stand him. I don't know if you saw, but you know what? It's something fascinating about him because of the kind of visa he's on, Zach, to be here. He has not earned any NIL money. Oh. He can't earn any, and he said that's, he hopes that in the future that the rules change so international players um, yeah, can, that's, can that's make money. Because I don't yeah. hate him, right? Right, right. He's just, a strong word. You just you just are frustrated with the hype he receives because he's seven foot four. Yeah, I'm, I'm frustrated with the fact that he is dominant. He has for dominant, sure, yeah. and it's a bullshit sport that some guy just because he's seven four, he's a fucking goof. He's like not even coordinated. He can't run. He can't move. Like this is a sport. It yeah. should be athletes should thrive. He's not an athlete. He's just seven foot four. And he drops the ball down in the rim I without say, jumping. What's his vertical? 13? 14 on a good day. I will say that I think he looks more athletic this year than he did last year. Yeah, he. I don't know. I don't, I've don't. i only watched like one second. I was like, get him off the fucking screen. But last year is when I really developed this disdain for Zach Eady. Because last year he couldn't catch a football I mean, or a, a basketball. Sport. No, he was such a bad athlete. And they're talking about he's like the most dominant player in college basketball. I'm like, then you need to fix, fucking change the sport. If that guy's the most dominant player in the whole league, mm -hmm. he's a bad athlete. How's that possible? And that's another case of like a guy who's a, a college star but will not be an NBA star. No, he, he will get his lunch money taken in, in the NBA. I mean, I don't know. It's a soft league. He might dominate it too. No, he won't dominate, bro, because like you have to be able to defend at, at the NBA level. And so like that's why centers are kind of like moving to out of style unless yep. you're like – like Embiid has such a deep bag. Like Victor, want to fuck your mama, is like got <laughs> elastic limbs and is 7'9 and can shoot. So I, I, don't, I don't think Zach will be well, – I mean, the NBA has guys like Kevin Durant who are like 6'10 yeah. but play but can move like a guard. Yeah, that is – Skill and athleticism, That's what right? I'm saying. That That, that is – a phenomenal dominant player to me mm -hmm. like damn he's 6'10 and can move like that and shoot like that that dude is a great player right this fucking Edie guy i mean he just stands by when he finally gets to the other end of the court which most of the time they're like come on buddy come on get down here <laughs> once he gets there they just throw it up high he catches it and just drops it in a fucking hoop it's like me playing with luke this one was crazy, dog. After 15 years in Kentucky, John Calipari, wild five year deal to go to Arkansas. Bro was trying to get fired. No one can convince me otherwise. Well, they, the, the craziest part, because I went to Kentucky for two years. I have a, my son is a big Kentucky basketball fan because his mom graduated from there. I went there. So, like, my brothers are Kentucky basketball fans. So, there's been a lot of talk about Calipari. And when they came out and said, He'd been negotiating and talking to Arkansas about this since late February. That's nuts. That was right before Kentucky shit down their leg in the SEC tournament, right before they got bounced out of the tournament by Oakland and some kid who only dribbled the ball four times. Like, you talk about the team was checked out. The fucking coach was checked out, too. Coach. Calipari was sayonara. Coach but was big checked out. Kentucky's the best basketball job in the country, probably. Yeah. Supposed to, right? I mean, they should be. I mean, most NBA players, like all this the talent in the world, like they they were supposedly backed pretty significantly nil wise. Like, and now, like on the way out, it's been kind of a slander campaign. They're talking about, oh, well, like they've been stingy with their nil, and it it just felt like Coach Cal wanted the Ed Orgeron moment of fire me and let me get my thirty mil, and then right. I'll go to my next job. <laughs> right. And then when he didn't get it, he was like, "Fuck it, I'm going to leave anyway," and he's going to Arkansas. John Tyson, Tyson Foods. Oh yeah, billionaire told him 
they're going to give him the largest NIL budget in the country to go get a roster. Everybody, go check on your best player because it's coming. Oh, it's coming. Everyone's getting chicken What's, nugget deals. I think the wildest thing, and I listened to the radio this morning, which I don't normally do, but they were talking about it, and I it's probably all bullshit. But they said he had interest in the Ohio State job. Yeah, he did. That's, that's what they're saying, bro. That blows I need to hit, hear him say it because you're listening, we're listening to Buckeye fucking people talk. But if he had interest in Ohio State and Bjork didn't go get that job done, like, you imagine if Calipari got hired at Ohio State, mm -hmm. Buckeye fans would be losing their shit. Yeah. Well, I saw a Kentucky, a Kentucky writer wrote that he was interested in the Ohio State job, and I guess the timing didn't work out. Fuck the timing. Make the timing work. I'm going to say, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. Make it work out. Do you want to get a quick word from our partner, though, Zach? We will do that. We'll be right back after this. Top of the morning to you, Menace Army. It's that time of year. Everybody's a little Irish, and if you are Irish, you could maybe put a little Irish in somebody else this St. Patrick's Day. Menace Army, I got something for you. Manscaped, our partner, has just dropped a new lawnmower, and it is badass. The Lawnmower 5.0, it has two blades. So you have one, they're normal manscaper. It's like a trimmer for body hair and your manly parts. And then they have a second blade, a foil blade, to go smoother wherever your heart may desire. Let's get that smooth slip and slide ride for St. Patty's Day. What do you say? The good news is for Menace Army, you get 20% off of free shipping. So get 20% off free shipping using promo code Menace at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off of free shipping with code menace at manscaped.com this st patrick's day make sure your little hairy leprechaun is a luckier than ever manscaped leprechaun back to the show i had to play it one more time we'll, we'll get a new ad read tomorrow that's not not old but that was my i think my favorite ad read ever your little furry leprechaun <laughs> nah that's fucking hell <laughs> but hey it's a great razor or um, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it clipper you yeah. got to get it it's a great leprechaun trimmer. Yes, it is. We'll call it that. Um, the Kentucky job, that's a crazy job to open up, right? I mean, we've now watched like two, I mean, across multiple sports, like guys who are really big time kind of leave their jobs. Um, is that Kentucky job a top three college basketball job in the country as it sits today? Yeah, I mean, I would think so. Okay. I mean, it's because now it could end up being a distraction for UConn. Dan Hurley, I guess, is like their top option or top choice yeah. right now. Uh, I mean, they're, they're prepared to make him a $5 million raise. Like he's, I mean, Kentucky bas basketball is so eerily similar to Ohio State football, Ooh, where it's yeah. like they don't care about anything else. I mean, horse racing a little bit, but outside of that, in the whole state, all they care about is college basketball. I used to, when I, I went to Kentucky for two years, you'd go to a football game, the minute the other team was up, they're out of there, out of there. Basketball games, those sons of bitches are intense for two weeks in the snow just trying to get a lottery ticket to hopefully get tickets to the basketball game like they're nuts no they are nuts and they're the people oh bro breaking news down hayden just hit the portal 12 seconds ago oh buddy i did not see that one coming dallin hayden in the portal oh my goodness there where do is. you think he's gonna go oh buddy i mean what, 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 all right so just real quick first two teams that come to mind tennessee michigan the easy because, like, who's who's behind Donovan Edwards? I, I'm sure Dallin has got to be up there. Obviously, relationship with Tony Alford, that matters. Um, the Tennessee part of it, you know, has Tennessee ties, was recruited by them heavily. Um, last year, he was not in the portal, but Tennessee tampered a good amount. Yeah, a lot. A, a lot, um, and to the point where he almost Ooh. went. I mean, it, it's, it's one of those things that hurts for 2025. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hurt for this year. They're fine. It's like a beast thing for this year. Yeah, I mean, you'd like to have him. Barring an injury, he would have been in the one-two rotation. But you have the two best backs in the country. So that stings for 2025. And the question now is going to be, where is he going to go? Because yeah. we all know what's going on up north. Who just went up north? If Dallin goes up north, <laughs> buddy. That's going to be something. And then it makes you wonder, Zach, in this spring game, what running backs are going to play? Well, Ryan did say everyone's going to play. I would imagine a lot of those everyone's will be sparingly, you know, one series or whatever. But you're going to see the young backs, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you're probably going to see a lot of a TC Caffey, who yep. a, a good good back, really good walk on back, and played a lot of places, can play a lot of G five places. Um, James Peoples, you could see him getting a lot of reps. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, Dixon, the Dixon kid, 
But holy smokes, that's definitely I you know it's 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 a little more than just a little sting for me because my belief was Dallin Hayden would get a ton of reps this year based on the fact you don't want Trey or Judkins to get hurt in those first six games and it's a yeah. long season. And obviously with the history of the running back position, like at least at Ohio State the last couple of years and that fucking dumbass slit turf. Like Yeah, I mean it's it does hurt for 2025 though. This is a moment where you could look back at the end of the college football season and say, eh, no big deal. Or you could look back and be like, damn, kind of like Keon Saab transferring from Michigan. When he transferred, Michigan fans were like, ah, eh, whatever. He was the third best safety anyways. Then they go to spring ball. Rod Moore tears his ACLs out for the year. And you're like, oh shit, him leaving really hurts now. Pray, knock on wood, nothing happens. But really not a good deal. You really wish you could have kept him through the year. Yep. And then it, it's kind of short-sighted by Dallin Hayden because after this year, you're the guy in Columbus. Like almost unequivocally, unless they go get a big fish out of the portal. But only question really, and I hate to say this out loud, but if he goes up north, he'll be the guy there next year too once Donovan Edwards leaves. Yeah. And now you start getting into, was there tampering involved? Was there a little recruiting pitch going on behind the scenes? Mm. That's really interesting. And I'm only going to throw this up here just because it is relevant. Buckeye Brazy, thanks for the five. I did say last week down, look, checked out in that 11 Warriors interview. Shame on day. Well, it's it's unfortunate because it was obviously a mismanagement. I don't know how you lose that kid. I mean, you're listen, you're going to play some this year, and then next year you're going to be handed the keys to the fucking Ferrari. Yeah. I, it's just... It's gonna be. They're gonna have a young backfield in 2025. That's all. That's all it is. Well, and now Peoples is super important. And honestly, if you look at all the portal positions for next year, Zach, you got to look and think. Oh yeah. Maybe next year you look to add a portal running back, just <coughs> so you don't have two true sophomores kind of toting the ship for them because you don't want to have a thin room because injuries happen and it's going to be a long season. So. Oh yeah, they're gonna. And honestly, I'd be looking at the portal right now. Yeah, I the mean, post spring so, portal. So last week we didn't talk about it. I didn't put it on the show, but there was like that one random crystal ball for the UMass running back to Ohio State. Yeah, that caught people's attention a little bit because they thought a guy like Peoples, who loves Tony Alford, who all he knew was really Tony Alford, kind of at Ohio State, but he would go. Maybe he didn't like the weather, which I don't know if you don't like the weather in Columbus. But why are you going to go to Michigan? Whatever, yeah, it's worse. And you're close to Detroit. Fuck that. Yeah, so, so something like that. So, huh? So, yeah, I mean, you you now now that's that's a portal spot. So, if you're looking at Ohio State this year, the portal positions, running back, offensive line, maybe linebacker, mm. for really depth, linebacker. maybe. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I, I think ultimately you're looking at maybe offensive line and now running back. That's yeah. all you need. That's all they need. Hmm. That's interesting, and that's just for depth at running back. They don't need a like in my eyes. It's a kid that's a freshman, enrolled early somewhere, not what he thought it was going to be. You know, you fin Ohio State finished third or second. Maybe a guy like Mark Fletcher would be a good one to go to go tamper with a bit. Yeah. That is interesting. That is interesting. Huh. I wonder if that room's going to end up getting real, real thin again. Thank you for the uh, breaking news on that. I do want to hit a couple uh, just other topics, Zach. Yeah. Uh, Harold uh, – Merrill Hodge, excuse me. You know, he's one of my favorite draft guys, right? Like, he sits down, watches a lot of tape, gives us takes. I've tried to learn a little bit from him and kind of, like, how he goes about the process for quarterbacks in particular, like measuring, like, traits versus tape. And I can't obviously break down tape, but I've tried to learn a little bit about traits and what picks up. This concerned me because I have Drake May as my quarterback one. He came out and said Drake May is the kind of player that will get you fired. Well, that's my kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess – Drake May has that Mac Jones feel to him. Okay. But I, I mean I've I've studied his tape. I don't think I think he's a better player than Mac Jones was. But it's one of those things where you get a kid like this from North Carolina. It's tough. It's a Daniel Jones effect. It's like, all right, why wasn't he in New York City? Well, he was at North Carolina. It's like, okay, well, then the projection is you bring him to the NFL, he has better personnel around him. Mm -hmm. He's going to elevate his game, but what if he doesn't? Right? And that's not Mac Jones. That's more Zach Wilson. That's more Trey Lance. But, I mean, I could get behind that statement a little bit. But ultimately, like, you take a guy in the top three, and if he's a complete bust, you're probably getting fired. Yeah. Caleb Williams, to me, is the guy that gets you fired. I, I You know, it's funny. I don't think Caleb Williams gets you fired. Well, I, think he, I think he does. Because there's 
there's evidence right there. I guess I, I guess the, the part of it from yeah, I mean he he might I don't think he'll get a coach fire, maybe not a GM Listen, fire. If Caleb Williams goes to the Bears and is a complete fucking bust, I mean he's a complete pussy, complete bust. Mm-hmm. Hindsight's 2020. Everyone's gonna be like, duh. Like this dumbass GM, everyone, fans, owners are gonna be like, damn. I he- guess like I think that whatever GM drafts Caleb Williams will get a second chance because there was such widespread he's quarterback one. You know what I'm saying? Like I've seen GMs like when there's like a no brainer. Yeah, guy. but they don't care, Chris. In three years, no one's gonna remember that feeling. All they're gonna remember or all they're gonna know is they watched him be a bust and he painted his nails, wore dresses, played awful against top twenty-five defenses. That's the you know the narrative is going to shift. Yeah, it all it always seems to. It always does. I saw a couple of draft guys say that the comparison for Caleb Williams is not Patrick Mahomes. In fact, it's closer to Aaron Rodgers. What is your thoughts on that? For Caleb Williams? Yeah. Well, that's a reach for me. I mean, I think his absolute maximized version of himself is Patrick Mahomes esque. Okay. I, I don't see the Aaron Rodgers comparison at all, actually. I, I think I see it on some of like the, the rollout sideline pushing stuff, but that's just like select plays being pulled out because you know yeah, I mean, how it's look the same. Yeah. I just thought it was an interesting like change of direction. I just wanted your just overall thought on it. Yeah, I mean it's I think they're changing that narrative because he's gonna go number one overall. And you always have to be careful. Someone who plays the position so different than most people, like mm-hmm. Pat Mahomes, like Lamar Jackson, to be like, Oh, he's just like Lamar Jackson. It's like, okay, I've heard that eight thousand times. And no, he's not. So it's tough to say he's like Pat Mahomes. It's like, but there's only one of those. Yeah, <laughs> there's only one of those. Um, NFL draft silly season. So we have some some draft stock news. Devondre Sweat was charged with the uh, the DWI. Um, he was a second or third round pick. That's a de- Texas defensive tackle. It's like, honestly, two two things of this. <laughs> People have him mocked in the second or third round. I thought he was a borderline first rounder. Well, off the field shit matters. Yeah. I guess how much does this impact his draft stock in your eyes? It's not. I mean, it, it might make him slide a little bit, but D tackles are are like, I mean, they're like gold. Yeah, that's they why really I'm surprised are. that he's getting like a second or third round grade. Because when I watched him on Bourbon and Ball, oh, the one man. of the breakdowns you did, he like he's moving like he's bending like a safety, swimming around dudes, throwing people back, strong as shit. Like I didn't really see any of the holes in his game. Obviously, I've only watched the one breakdown that he was in. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know where. where yeah, we sure, certainly didn't study the whole season, but right, but I, we broke down at least two games of his. And, and that was against the the more the what the more award winning uh, offensive line. Yeah, we broke him down against Bama. We broke him down in, in the college football playoffs. We broke him down a handful of times yeah. this year, and I think the kid's outstanding. I, I you got to be careful. View Sweat is viewed as a as a second to third round draft pick. Okay, by who? You're by right. J, JPA football. Like we'll see. I bet you that kid's an early second rounder. Okay, I, I think I would take him anywhere between twenty down. Yeah. 25 is probably where I feel really good about him just because I think like, and I, and I may be alone on this. I think a really dominant defensive tackle is harder to find than, than a really good defensive end. And I think they wreck games more than defensive ends. Now I, I, I also know it's just harder to hit on those guys. Yeah. Cause there's been what one or two Quinn Williams and fucking Aaron Donald. Like there's right. not that many out there. No. Um, so I think you have a chance to get something like that. I think, I think you do uh, more character stuff. It's funny. The Malik neighbors wide receiver one buzz started. And now all of a sudden, <laughs> We're worried about him being a diva, off the field stuff. Zach, we're at the point where we get to the character assassination of the character, the, the 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 throwing at the armor. We saw it last year with CJ Stroud a little yeah. bit. We saw it with Jalen Carter, which maybe he he earned some of it, but some of the stuff was silly from yeah. Jalen Carter. Um, and here we are, Malik Neighbors. All of a sudden, has his stock start to rise, and now we've got pebbles being thrown. Oh yeah, what's your take? I mean, I don't know. I don't know the kid. I mean. Didn't really have any issues at LSU, right? Mm-hmm. Rumored to hit a, a hit a recruiting girl. Fucking who hasn't? What <laughs> what player hasn't done that? Like I, I just rely on actual things that we know about. Yeah, and and I can't stand when people do this. Like rumors are that he has off the field concerns. Well, everyone has off the field concerns, right? They're 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah, you're concerned because they're young and they're about to be rich as shit. I'm concerned. Didn't matter when Johnny Manziel went to the NFL. Literally didn't matter. A- like, they didn't even, tr- it was like, oh, fuck, he's so good. He's going to be better, bigger than LeBron. And you're like, what? He was the red flag. I mean, he is a living red flag. Yeah, they said he didn't watch film one time at AM. But you know how it is. They are literally just, it's getting closer. There's all this, these clicks, and they need something different. 
to push down your throat to get you to read and watch. And it's like, oh, you know. So I don't think this is about clicks. I've said this every year. Whenever you see a kid all of a sudden get the rise and start to rise at those draft boards, all of a sudden he'll pass a team. The team will be like, hold the fuck on. Ain't no way. Yeah. He's got he's got this problem. He got drunk at this party. He didn't get invited to his teammates' birthday party. <laughs> you get all that shit because it's like a final last last ditch effort from a team who doesn't have the capital to move up, who really wants a player. Yeah. I That's mean, what this is. This kid started getting wide receiver one buzz, and they said he fucked his teammates' baby mom. We can't you you'd be silly to draft him number six overall. Right. I mean, don't 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 get it twisted. That stuff happens. Mm-hmm. Like this is a very high stakes poker game and there's poker faces. There's shady shit cards under the table. Like that absolutely happens. And you get some team sitting at 10, like, Ooh, we think he is a no doubt wide receiver one in the league. They're like, fuck we, they, the, the, the narrative starts changing. Someone's going to take him before Marvin Harrison jr. And that team at 10 is like, hold up. No, no, Marv, was, no, Marv, no, no, Marv, no, draft Marv, draft Marv. Marv. <laughs> They That's, start floating shit out there. They call up their 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 beat writer. Say, hey, call a friend. Start getting this narrative out there. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get this kid to fall to us. I mean, shit, we watched it with CJ Stroud last year. The Texans said from the jump, like, yo, he was going to be our guy. Yeah. He was going to be our guy. We were throwing people off the scent. We were trying to mess with some stuff. People try to get him to slide past the Texans by the Manning stuff, the S2 test, which he was the only score that got leaked. Of course. How about that? Um, and all kinds of other shit, and he ended up getting drafted number two overall anyway. So I think I think it's just a last last ditch effort from a team who does not have the draft capital uh, to uh, probably to to move up. Zach went into super chats and then get to some uh, college football topics. Yeah. Jared, thanks for the five. Chris, please address J Cole bitching yeah. out of the beef with Kendrick. Man's going out sad. Fall off is real. Hashtag free food. Uh, do you want Do you want to get a quick word on this, or you, am I? Yeah, I mean, listen. You put out a whole ass song and then you want to go to concert and like your, your energy wasn't right about it. Like what man, stand on your fucking business. You put that song out. You didn't have to put it out. What? You didn't know that it was going to, it was going to be offensive. Mm -hmm. You wrote the fucking thing. <laughs> like just don't get involved if you don't want to do it. But once you do it, you better fucking back it up. You better stand on your business like that. I thought it was soft as shit. I'm not going to lie, bro. Kendrick, I'm not. Here we go. Kendrick called you a bum. Said first person shooter. Hope ass switches with it. Said all kinds of shit about you. Called your your latest work, your best work, a light pack. You drop you drop the disc, a whole album talking about Mike delete later. It's later, nigga. Delete that shit now because you obviously want no smoke. The big three is dead. It's now just the big two. You are now banished to the world of of yeah. of, of Wale and Big Sean. You no longer want to rap. <laughs> go over there, dog. We're done with you, man. Start singing in your music. I'm just saying, bro. Go go back to that basketball team, bro. Because I'm 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 disgusted that you would apologize like that. I'm just saying. It's bitch energy. I, get, I got no time for that. How do you get bitch slapped through the music? <laughs> right. <laughs> MC, thanks for the five. Jeremiah Smith, the alien, back at it again. <clears throat> Name him the starter already. I don't care. He's already better than Marv. <laughs> Damn. There's a statement. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's going to be a starter. You, you, you want us to announce it? We can announce I think everyone knows he's going to start, right? Breaking news. Jeremiah Smith announced a starting wide receiver at Ohio State. Shocker future brighter than the sun benjamin bunch thanks for becoming a member appreciate you benjamin 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 um wisconsin buckeye thanks for the two light skins got to be careful in the sun chris <laughs> yeah i'm always careful i He's, chris is prepared i believe in sunscreen i'm keeping my eyes safe as you as you can see i mean i wear these when i look in the mirror every day because my future is so fucking bright <laughs> So bright, dog. Mello, thanks for the five. It's 12-10, and Michigan still sucks. Optimus Prime is wide receiver one, a.k.a. Jeremiah Smith. I've heard Optimus Prime. I've heard Dark Matter. I prefer the Josh Gordon no weed. My, <laughs> Josh Gordon without the weed. That's my go-to. That's like when they called uh, Anthony Richardson, Cam Newton, no laptop. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> that's, like, that's like my style of nickname. I like it. Jordan, thanks for the five. Me and my college roommates... Uh, would throw chairs off our balcony and eggs. Damn, was funny, but now it's childish. Rent still do, Chris. UConn done dirty, by the way. Oh, uh, did you watch the uh, the semifinal game between UConn and Iowa? The moving screen that got oh, called. Yeah, they didn't get done dirty. She was moving. It's an absolute foul. Yeah, 
It, I, I mean, I, I get it's a it. Sh- it's a shame for the game to end that way, but it was it was. A well, fun. don't move your fucking feet. Right. I know. I know a little bit about basketball. You got to set your feet and set a pick. You can't keep moving. That's and a moving pick. That's a, that's illegal. I used to be of the belief, like like let let them play it out, like this, that, and the third, until my baseball coach actually said, "How would you feel in the ninth inning of a World Series series game if the strike zone changed?" Oh yeah, you can't do. I'll that. be like, damn, that's a really mature way to put it. And I, you hate to see it. Obviously, you don't want a game to end that way. But it, it was a foul. I am disappointed because I, I wanted Paige to get that chance to, like, hit a shot or some yeah. shit. But, um, but in, instead of blaming the ref, blame the person who set the moving screen. And chicken winged it. Yeah. Chicken wang. Like That's on her. So don't do that. <laughs> it's that simple. Saying. Don't do that. If you want chicken wang, go to Roosters. Yeah. Or, now go to, uh, Yogi's. go to Yogi's. Yogi's got better wings. Um, you know, let's get a quick word from the partner. Sounds good. Uh, we'll get a little self-promotion for you. We'll be right back after this. All right, Menace Army, when we don't have ads, we just self-promote. They're kind of narcissistic, I guess. But if you love the show, you love the platform, you love the growth, where we're going, here's a great way for you to support us. Menace2merch.com, the number two. We have like 10 or 12 items on there right right now, the rebrand. You see the shirt I'm wearing, kind of the Menace Superman shirt. It's got the down the spine. It's got Menace to Sports, um, which you can see on the website. But um, we priced everything fairly low. This is more about promotion and kind of getting you guys – to rep our brand across the country. So we got a, we got female gear. We got a bathing, a one piece bathing suit. Uh, don't, I actually need to take the two piece off. It's fucking awful. We got a sample. So don't order that, but we're, we're quality control right now. We got hoodies. We got cutoff shirts. We got workout shirts. This is a fitness shirt. It's outstanding. And I'm going to add more stuff this week. So there's about be about 20 items. Um, takes a couple weeks to get to you, but go, go support us. Go to menace to and rock the brand. There you go. Go check it out. I got the color rush. I got a all. I got like five pieces coming today. I'll put them in the store. Scarlet and gray. Started with Ohio State. We're gonna do Michigan next. We're gonna get you some color rush, some team color gear. So it'll be out this afternoon. Go check it out. Menace to merch.com. We love a uh, we love a good old fashioned color rush. Zach, mm-hmm. want to keep the super chats going? Oh, I already read that one. Uh, Benjamin Bunch, member, thanks for the six. Dayton in the house. I live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, but now rep Scarlet and Gray every day. Hope Will Howard pulls through. Devin is too brittle. Do you think Devin is injury prone or unlucky? And is there a difference in the two? Um, we don't know yet. I mean, he had one year where he got hurt. Mm-hmm. And it was twice, right? He got hurt before the spring game, and then he got hurt during the year. And then that was nagging for sure. If he I gets hurt I- again this year, once or twice, then yeah, now you start talking about he might be injury prone. But it, one year, a lot of players have been hurt for a year. And maybe maybe I'm naive, but when I think about guys who are injury prone, I think a lot about the uh, the soft the soft tissue injuries rather than like the like the bad accident injuries. Um, to me, to me at least, that's kind of where I where I think of things because it's not like it it's not like nothing happened. Like he 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 ran the ball, and he's a is a is a thinner quarterback and got his ankle twisted <laughs> up and and buckled. Yeah, if he's going to be running the ball, though, that that could be it could become an issue. But I think it's mm-hmm. premature to, to say he's too brittle or he's injury prone. Dude got hurt one year. Yeah, because like if Devin Brown is brittle, that means that also like Trey Henderson's brittle, like yeah. like Emeka's brittle. I don't care as long as the guy can play. Mm-hmm. Devin will. I don't give a fuck what his name, what their name is. Michael, yeah. but make Michael the quarterback as long as he can play. And also, like the other side for me is like, damn, like that kid volunteered to run the red zone package and got right. hurt, and now is being labeled like he can't play because he volunteered for that. When he didn't, he didn't have to do it. They could have, they he could have just said, you know what, let's let Kyle try to do it. Well, we watched that happen. Yeah, we, we watched did. it. Two fat people fuck. Okay, crazy, crazy times. Sun and the moon. Gorky, thanks for the two. Riley Gaines is a hero. Caitlin Clark is great. I agree with both of those statements. Hey, man, <clears throat> this is Dan. Dan's plugged in. Dan knows so much, and I know that Dan's going to have Jerry Emmick's Black Escalade outside of his house looking for him because Dan's been saying some stuff from inside the Woody. I don't know it's supposed to get out, but here we go. Chris, I'm 95% there on Friday, leaving Nashville around 4 a.m. to be there. Let's go. Hope to have more juice for you guys. Let's go, man. Come on out. We'll be there. So Dan is another one of the guys in the scene that does a show, and he's the only other person I've heard talk about the fact that Chip Kelly was not happy about Will Howard losing his black strike. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that that matters. So come see come see Dan. Come to the live show. We're going to be at the live show as well. And also, Pat's going to be there. We love Pat. He is going to be there. Pat will be there. Pat will be there. Hopefully on time this time. <laughs> Damn. 
<laughs> Keel, thanks for the 10. If UConn wins tonight, that's six in the last 25 years, four in the past 12. Time to include them with UNC, Duke, and Kentucky. Hey, there's no doubt. There is no doubt. I mean. I just need UConn to win. And you know why they don't get mentioned with those schools, Zach? It's because of the NBA prowess, right? Yeah. It's like Duke and Kentucky will go get the clear and obvious one and done guys. And so it's like they get mega star coverage the entire year because it's like, oh, this is the best prospect since LeBron. Here he yeah, is. Yeah, right. Like, here we go. Like, oh, here's Jason Tatum, like the number one whatever. And it's so it's like, okay, like, oh, like it's Carmelo. It's Kobe. So it's like they kind of get that pump, that hype. And then, you know, so the winning, the winning doesn't matter as much. I mean, even fucking Calipari went on record and said, I really just want to get guys ready for the league. Yeah. This and if is, we this, win, we his win. program is an NBA development program. Mm -hmm. It just happens to play in college, college, basketball. college basketball. Really, he'd be a great G League coach if, it's, if that's what it's about. Right. Right. Uh, Gary, thanks for the five. Can a player go from school to school collecting NIL money? What's the conditioning program <clears throat> at Ohio State like compared to other schools? Let's start with the first one. Can, can guys go from school to school to collect NIL money? Sure. I mean, you get NIL for when you're at that school. So you could transfer to another school and get an NIL deal there. I don't know that – I guess if it's to, to elevate your salary, you could do that. And, I mean, there's been players like Jermaine Matthews came out right after the year like, y'all got to pay me, like basically threatening to leave. So there's a number of ways to get a deal done in college athletics right now, and one of them is to transfer. We see guys like Will Howard getting a million bucks. Kansas State wasn't giving him a million bucks. I can promise you that. So the transfer portal is just another vessel to try to go make some maybe, – maybe increase your, your salary for the year. You know what I know is going on, Zach, and it's going on at a lot of schools across the country. The NIL collectives are putting something in the clause, basically saying if you move from this uh, city, from this radius in the time that this contract is in place, we will ask you to pay back this percent of your NIL. Hmm. So that's like an interesting way, but it's basically pay for play, but it's kind of a little workaround. I am wondering for the time if there is a lawsuit, will a, will a school pursue that if someone leaves and does not pay it back? Yeah, I mean, that's it's a legal contract now. You, yeah. You, College athletes, you wanted to get paid? Welcome to big business. But I guess, like, does it make sense for the school to say, you know what? We're going to sue you to try to collect this money. Yeah. And then it's then you run the risk of, like, discovery and, like, court and all that. <laughs> and, and that's not a very good recruiting. Like, if, if I'm recruiting as a school that just sued a kid for leaving, oh, goodness, I'm going to have a field day. So, like, is the, is the risk worth the reward? Like, well, say to get $25,000 back, is it worth this being, like, a major no, headline? Probably not. Thing? That's why they don't. But if it's a big enough amount, they'll do it crazy stuff it just well it, and and we, we might we might never have it because my guess is in the next four years nil won't really be a thing no it won't so it definitely won't um and what was the strength and conditioning program like at ohio state compared to like florida temple and that well i mean it was the same one i mean mickey marati obviously was at florida was was at so I, I don't really know many other strength and conditioning programs 15 years in and mickey was a strength coach for 13 of them and the other two, a guy named Frank Perino was a strength coach at both Marshall and Temple, and he was a Mickey disciple. So it was a little different, but it's kind of all the same. I mean, some places like Bama lean more sports science, uh, although Ohio State's trying to to always evolve in that space. But it, every, everyone's a little different. Everyone thinks they have the toughest offseason program in the country, and lo and behold, I bet you most of the top 20 are all the same or very similar. Yeah, I guess I think about the science that you talked about, like Bama and them sometimes. Yeah. But I don't know if, if like some of the stuff that what Marucci is his name. Oh yeah, Jack Marucci. Yeah, if that LSU, if that's considered conditioning, or is that just like more like a that's separate. sports science. That's that's sports specific development. Okay, they, they I mean they still train their ass off at LSU. It's not yeah, like, yeah. I know. I I got you. Yeah, Marucci. Everyone should look that name up. Jack Marucci, big baseball guy, baseball and softball. Big baseball guy. Um, where are we at? P2, thanks for the two. Lachlan, get any blame for the loss of Down Hayden. Lost his top guy for next year. What are your thoughts? I mean, it's on Ryan. Lachlan just got here, mm -hmm. right? He just got here. Like, he hasn't got to know Dallin Hayden yet. Maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe he, he should, Ryan should have gotten a running back coach earlier to build a, a relationship. I mean, we don't know the details of it yet, but ultimately this falls on Ryan, right? Like, he's the one that is in charge of the roster. And especially when you have a coaching transition, that's got to be priority one. And I know it was. And also, the kid just might want to leave. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't think you give Lachlan any blame. I, I do wonder, like, remember Ryan Day said that when candidates came to Columbus or whatever, they would be part of the interview process? Yeah. I don't know if that ended up being the case with Lachlan, and that could be a reason, but. I don't know. Maybe don't know. maybe Dallin didn't want to be a soft batch cookie. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I think he is a soft batch cookie if he's in the portal. No, I don't disagree. Yeah. So, also, it's funny because, like, people wanted to slam on, like, the recruitment of Tony Alford. Like, <laughs> right. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know want to get into it right now, I guess. But just one of those one of those funny things. Um, Speed, thanks for the five. Member Speed, how can we keep kids from entering the portal when there are injuries plus a possible 16-game season? I mean, even three should see significant playing time. Yeah, I mean. Like I said, we don't know the specifics here, but I absolutely agree. And he could have entered the portal a while ago. He could have sat out spring, right? Mm -hmm. If he really, when Tony Alford left, if he really was like, I don't want to be here. I want to go to Michigan or I want to go to Tennessee. He could have just sat out and not risked injury, but he didn't. He kept practicing. He kept repping. He kept playing. That would lead me to believe just projecting and reading between the lines here. He wasn't really fucking with what they were doing in practice for him. <laughs> Like maybe it was the style of offense. Maybe it was the rep, the rep share he was getting. Maybe he was never going with the ones. I don't know specifics, but if he was truly just, I want to go somewhere to play, Quinshawn Jug has transferred here in January. He could have sat out spring with the intent to transfer in the, in the April 15th window. He did not. That tells me logic. This is called logic. He didn't like what happened in spring. And that either confirmed a belief or made him believe that he'd be better off somewhere else. I'm actually a little bit surprised that when Quinchon Judkins got here, he didn't hit the portal because we do know there was grumblings. He wanted to play and was getting gassed up. and felt like he did a good enough job to play. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and then when Judkins came in, I mean, you got to think about it. He was a guy that without Judkins was going to either be the one-two punch or the one punch at Ohio State if Trey decided to go. Yeah. So for him to kind of take that back seat and lose his running back coach. Yeah. I mean, just a lot that, happened. That's for a kid. lot to swallow. Yeah, it's a lot of shit. Especially I mean, literally like, when this, after the bowl game, Dallin Hayden went to his dorm room or apartment or whatever he has, looked in the mirror and said, damn, if Trey leaves, I'm the fucking guy this year. I am RB1, bitches, in the scarlet and gray. After that happened, Trey came back. Quinshawn Judkins, one of the best backs in the country, transferred in. His position coach that recruited him and he had a close relationship left. Like, a lot of shit happened from that mirror moment. And the kid just... And he still went through spring ball. So that still tells me... Spring ball either confirmed something for him or he just wasn't fucking with what was going on for him. Yeah. He's going to be a good back somewhere else, man. Like I thought at, he was really good last year. Like at Michigan, when they don't, when pass pro doesn't really matter because all they do is run the ball. <laughs> right. His biggest issue was pass pro and they don't throw it. But he's a real natural runner. Like has oh, really, yeah. really good vision, <laughs> has decent acceleration, decent burst. Yeah. It felt like he always turned like the two or three yard run into a four or five yard run. Mm -hmm. At Michigan, that's what you need. Call mm -hmm. that, call that boy baby Blake Corn. Baby Blake. Go get him, Michigan. Go Man, get him, Tony. Man, you want to villainize Tony Alvarez even more. Let that motherfucker transfer to Michigan. Wait oh, till, boy. Wait till people find out find out that uh, the Kyle McCord was almost going up north, too. <laughs> wait till people find that out. <laughs> That's the real banger. <laughs> Jimmy Harbaugh was trying, bro. That's the real banger. Um, Here we go. Oh, no, I already read that one. Charles, thanks for the two. Two hours looking for those damn glasses. No luck. Bro, I just saw Yogi's has them at the bar. Go right. get you a galaxy bomb, a blue moon, and a, and a free pair of glasses, and then look straight into the sun. Bro, I'll fight you for these. <laughs> Come get them. <laughs> these are actually, you see the what the middle says? Jenny's ice cream. It says Prada. Prada. <laughs> this, is, this is that Louis Vuitton. This is that Roman Wilson special. <laughs> mastermind straighter athletics thanks for the five watch the game for 2014 josh perry joshua perry was absolutely better than i remember and if it was an all menace team darren lee makes it a little straight dog joshua yeah. perry was a freak dude dude he was a great player he just could fucking run he was so tall and long like he was a, he was a great player yeah i, I didn't know he that. Had smart as shit great kid like what what more do you want I didn't know that coming uh, that he got to Ohio State as an athlete. Oh yeah, because he was a big time track runner. He said the only person he lost to was Devin Smith <laughs> in Ohio, which, which is that's, nuts. Uh, that's a pretty fast guy. That's actually the only person I lost to, also, back in my day. Chris never raced Devin Smith. Nah, honestly, 
I've never lost to Devin. Honestly, one of the big reasons I didn't run track was because like guys like Garyon Conley were all like in the area, and like I also graduated like Paris Campbell, same class. So like I was looking around like when the track coach wanted me to run track, and I was like, I'll just play rugby, big dog, because yeah. there's there's definitely too much smoke. I was the J Cole of of of, of, of Akron track. <laughs> J Cole Drew. Yeah, J Cole Drew. Oh man, it's J Chris. We J call him J Chris. J Chris. <laughs> Gorky, thanks for the two. UConn been a basketball powerhouse. Win tonight too. Yep, I see it. I think they definitely win tonight. I hope so. You hate Zach or dislike Zach? I, I guess share the same name. I know. R. Shelley, thanks for the five. What's up, Zach and Unk? Hate seeing what D H leaving down Hayden, but uh, don't blink when Ohio State gets or loses a player because these guys jump around so much. Waiting till August. Well, you know, it's like anything else. Oh, man, it could be a problem in 2025. Do you know how many cycles we have to go through before the, the foot hits the ball in 2025? There's a, I mean, think about it. We have Quinshawn Judkins right now in Columbus. Yeah. Who saw that coming? Literally nobody. Like, for next fall, I don't even know who it could be. I don't even have a name off the top of my head. But there's a decent chance that the best back in the country comes to Columbus. I a million percent thought that Quinshawn Judkins was going to end up at Bama. Yeah, me too. The portal until you came in and said, dude, hold up. And I was like, no fucking way. And obviously, like, I know who your friends are. And so I started like really tripping out. But then like all the beat writers were talking about, oh, like Judkins is coming here. Don't get your hopes up. And then it, oh, it just changed. Like Judkins is coming. It's amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Kind of freaky, actually. R. Shelley, thanks for the two. Happy Eclipse Day. Is the eclipse today? <laughs> Shut the hell up. I'm excited for it. I'm not going to be here in 2099 when we get the next one. I promise you that. So I, I got a, I got a quick tip that the solar eclipse is coming back to the U.S. in 2044. It's not here. Just not here in the, the Midwest, like in Ohio? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there so. you go. If I make it to 2044, which that would make me, that'd be my 60th birthday. You'll absolutely make it to 2044. Well, I hope so. I mean, you're in the wealth and helmet. I'm trying to stay in the gym, eat healthy. Oh, you'll probably make it to 2099. Bro, I'll be 115 in 2099. I ain't making it to that. You are, bro. We're in the health and wellness era. Okay. By then, they'll have steroids that, like, regen stuff. Bourbon in the bus. Thanks for the five. What up, fellas? Zach, when is Menace of Sports going to come out here with their own barrel pick? I'm sure members would snag a bottle. Got to find a distillery. So, it, we've been working on it. The OHLQ or whatever, the Ohio Liquor Association, is a pain in the ass and they just got a new like i don't know what you call them commissioner or something like that so i'm working with a, a local restaurant to do a, a menace barrel pick and it's going to be a while but we're going to do it it's we just got to get it done get it approved like get everything done and then we'll do it and we're going to we're going to do a big event for the the bourbon bottle pickup so we'll have all the bottles there you come pick them up hang out maybe do a live show but it, it's like a six month process and i just or maybe nine months and so we're working on it. You know, in, in Ohio, it's hard. I don't know. Maybe other states, it's not. You know what else you need to do? You need to write a book at some point. I just want you to put that on your on your dog. Yeah, that'd be fun. Probably like a, a little bit later, and then you can go. Like, Someone else can write the book. I'll just talk to him. Okay. Ghostwriter? <laughs> yeah. Okay. We, we like that. We're here for that. We understand that. I'm just like thinking about all the stuff, like as you continue to rise in the media, like what's up next? Like the bourbon thing is cool. Like the bourbon ball is cool. Like <clears throat> seven on seven stuff. But at some point, like you're going to have, I mean, right now, I think you got enough stories for a memoir. Yeah. At some point, you're going to have to do it. Yeah. It'll be fun. You're going to have to do it. I mean, the people I see write books that I'll never read. Like, I think you're, I, honestly, I think your life's more interesting than Stephen A. Smith. He's went on a big book tour. <laughs> Probably. So my life definitely is more inter interesting than Stephen A. Smith. I mean, and it shows like when because Kerry Croft interviewed you yeah. and was the biggest interview on the on the channel. Mm -hmm. And it's like because your story's so interesting. And it's like that made me think about like the whole book thing. Yeah. So just something. Maybe maybe I'll write it. There you go. I'll get the I'll get the pen going. <laughs> if you dudes need some go ghost lines. Quiz Dewu, thanks for the five. Zach, as a parent, would you let little Lukey get coached by Urban Meyer? Yeah, I would. Hmm. Because listen, if you're a tough ass kid that does everything right, Urban wasn't that hard to play for. I mean, I say that, but Joshua Perry. <laughs> Had a rough go his freshman year. Yeah. But look what it did. Like, it's all about the end, the end result, right? You talk to Joshua Perry right now about Urban Meyer. He is beyond appreciative and now understands why he did what he did. Might not agree with some of the things he did, but it got an end result. 
And I watch Joshua Perry every day. Look at that fucking dude. Yeah. And I'm not saying Urban turned him into that. Like his parents did a great job with him. But Urban was a part of the process. I think great parenting paired up with that kind of coaching is a perfect marriage. Like I just, if, if yes. you're now, if you're a parent that has coddled your, your child a little bit too much, or maybe hasn't been the most difficult on them and, and has kind of told them that, you know, things are supposed to be a certain way. Like in, in that sense, you could get a situation where you get people talking about, Oh, well, well, this wasn't good for my mental health or this wasn't good for this, or this wasn't yeah. good for that. And then that's when you see things fall apart. But I think I want my kids coached hard and I want should. them to be coached by someone that knows what the fuck they're talking about. That, that's all. I don't, I don't need my kids to be given anything. They don't need to start. I want them to get better and get coached hard. That's it. And I think people who are around that environment and see the success kind of from that standpoint and see the good that comes from that are more willing to have their, their kids coached hard rather than those yeah. that aren't. Absolutely. Um, so that's that's kind of my thoughts on it. Zach, I'm ready to get a quick from our partner and talk all about Ohio State and the spring football. Only one last word. We're going to get to the Buckeyes right after this break. We'll be right back. What makes this platform different from others outside of the fact we're unfiltered and I actually worked in college football and might might know a little bit about the sport and about the game is we open the doors and open the windows and let you inside under the hood in college football. And the best way to do that is our film breakdowns. If YouTube would let us put them out publicly, we would make it all free, but they dig us with a copyright every time. Bourbon and balls are off season project. Every Tuesday night, I pick a bourbon and at 8 PM Eastern standard time, we go live and do a live breakdown, interactive, you ask questions. It's all 22 coaches film, so it's not film you, you can see anywhere else. It's not TV copy. This is truly what coaches use, what I used for 15 years of coach college football. And we break down a topic. We've done a Will full Will Howard breakdown, breaking down his game, what he was going to add to the Buckeyes. We did the Michigan National Championship game. There's over 200 game breakdowns in our library. If you want to learn college football at an, in an entirely different way, it's only 20 bucks a month. Or the best deal, if you want to do it, is you can lock it in right now with a 10% discount on patreon.com forward slash menace to sports. And you can get a whole year's worth. That'll include all next season when we break down up to five games a week. We really give you the insight and information you need to be knowledgeable about college football. Because several times, a, a, a sack will happen. And you watch on TV, you're like, God, this O-line sucks. Then you get the coaches film and watch. And they blocked the five guys they were supposed to block, the running back just released and was supposed to block a blitzing corner. It was really on the running back, but in your mind, you think the O-line sucks. It's always good to have quality information, and it's entertaining as shit. Drink a little bourbon, hang out with us all offseason, and then get ready for the 2024 college football season, possibly a nice little run for the Buckeyes. On Patreon, links in the bio. Come hang out with us. Well worth the money. That's all I got to say. Well worth the money. Are you ready for this week's mania, bro, in regards to the Ohio State spring game? Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Because it's going to be crazy. It's going to be wild. How do coaches evaluate the spring game, or do they not really kind of they acknowledge that it is mostly for the fans? No, I mean, there's certain things you can see, right? You're not going to – the defense certainly is not going to just roll out the Jim Knowles defense. Mm -hmm. they, they're, they're trying to – because there's nothing worse than – especially with this defense, there will be nothing worse for this team and the momentum and the fans and the, and the coaches and Ryan Day than this defense to go out and just beat the shit out of the offense. There's like, it's one of those where the defensive coordinator has to swallow his pride a little bit. It's like, Hey, you might have to put your third string corner in on Jeremiah Smith and let us get a little freaky because that's what the fans want to see. We want that positivity, that positive energy. So it is truly a show. A lot of it's orchestrated. Like if they're allowed to blitz, it'll be like very vanilla, simple blitzes. And a lot of times after the first half, when the first half's over, it'll be all base defense. So it's not real football. But what you can take away from it is there's a spotlight, right? It's very different than a scrimmage at the Woody. You're talking about 100,000 fans there. You're talking about in the stadium. National televised. Nationally televised. And now you get to see, can Jeremiah Smith, does he piss down his leg in that big moment? Or does he, God forbid, does he elevate his game a little bit? Like, does that adrenaline give him three more inches on his vertical? Like, does he go, like, he feels that competitive environment, that crucible that is a college football game, and does he rise to the occasion? Because that's what you'll find out in the spring game. That's the biggest thing coaches are looking for. When the pressure's on, and it's simulated pressure, this is not, you know, fourth and two against Michigan, mm -hmm. but it's bigger than the scrimmages you've been doing. What does that player do? How does he respond? 
with all that extra shit, all the fans, like, is he wide eyed urine going down his pants or is he fucking locked in square jaw? Like, Oh hell yeah. This is why I came here. That's what you can really find out in this game. Can a player win or lose a starting job in the spring game? Nah. In your opinion? Okay. Just, I was just, I mean, with curious. the fans and the, and the beat writers, he can mm. shit. Michael Thomas's first spring game, the, all the beat writers and fans thought he was an all American freshman, all American going to be the, just a stud. And he ended up being really good, mm. but it was premature, but he made a couple of crazy catches, crazy plays. Led, I think led the game in receiving. And all I heard about all off season was what, man, that Michael Thomas is going to be fun to watch. I'm like, yeah. If I can get him, like, he's got a ways to go, guys. I know he had flash plays, but he's got a ways to go to be a consistent big-time college football player. And he obviously, two years later, he was. And didn't Michael <clears throat> Thomas do the weird thing where he started, he didn't retro as a freshman, retro as a sophomore? Right? Yeah. That will never happen again, Zach, just so you know. No, no, no. That no. was a... That almost didn't happen. <laughs> that almost didn't happen then. This was before NIL and transfer portal. Yeah. Thank God. Shout out to Keyshawn and Mike's dad. They held it together for me, and we, we got him where we wanted to get him. You had to trust the process a little bit, but trusting the process is tough nowadays. Yeah, that, that's really. We also had a kid one time, and I was uh, a walk on that. That we had a draft. We were thin at receiver, and we drafted players. And so I, I told our staff we need to draft receivers early in the draft because there's like I know my lot. group. Right. You, there's bad, not a lot of them. Lot. Mm -hmm. And then we had so they ended up with I think one scholarship, one kid that was going to play, and then a kid named Frank Kanga who was a walk on receiver, who's a talented kid. I love the kid. Was a great. A great uh, asset to the room. And they were feeding Frank Kanga. <laughs> and people were like, who the fuck is Frank Kanga? And I'm like, this is a spring game celebrity right here. Spring game celebrity. Do you remember much from last year's spring game, Zach? Like, I want to ask you, what do you remember last year's? Not really. A you, little bit. I know Devin didn't play. Kyle looked mid. But do you remember what happened last year, bro? Uh-uh. The def bro, they they let the defense get freaky, bro. It was like 17 sacks. Oh. Like, remember, like the tackles were getting killed the whole game. And I it do put up that. It, remember put up the red it put up the uh the alarm, we need tackles was what it was. Like this was and, a and a non-statue quarterback. Right. We need tackles because remember the tackle we ended up getting after that was Simmons. Because remember, I thought Fitzpatrick looked good. That's the first time we saw what Fryer getting fucking abused yeah. by Kenyatta Jackson to the point where people were like, oh, well, Kenyatta's going to be a freak and All-American. So, like, that's okay. Then but this, it's the beauty of the spring game, right? Mm -hmm. Because if one position, one player, one group looks outstanding, that means another position on your team looked like dog shit. Yeah. And it's I, – I, I've told the story a hundred times, but I love saying it. Nothing was I, – I loved nothing more than in spring than when my guys had a great day and Urban complimented me on my group to throw that shot like yeah man the corners just didn't have it today <laughs> and then he would just steam would come out of his ears and he'd go go to the defensive room we get rid of him for a couple hours <laughs> brilliance 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 do you worry that the offensive line this year could end up being so far behind the defensive line to where it kind of ruins the spring game does that concern you at all because that's kind yeah. of what happened last year right yeah. like until until that third string defensive line came in nobody's moving the ball in fact the only explosive <laughs> play they had was the uh well, no, they had a chip train them long run, and then they had the Noah Rogers explosive. Both <laughs> players which transferred, so take yeah. that for what it's worth. The two explosive plays, both of them up out of here. Right. Um, I, I, I'm so excited for the spring game celebrities. Yeah. I love spring game celebrities. One, because it's cool for the kid, right? Like, and now they can get paid for it, damn it. It's like March right, Madness. Right. Now you go off in a spring game, roosters might call you up. Mm -hmm. Come do fucking a, a Noah Rogers wing special. <laughs> Eat your own secret sauce. <laughs> the Rodgers. Um, how much are you going to be paying attention to what quarterback goes behind what offensive line? And how in, how telling will it be with what quarterback goes out first? I don't know. I mean, they're, they're, first of all, not that telling. But really? there's going to be way too much conversation about it. Mm -hmm. Both from the media, fans, even the coaches beforehand. Chris, for sure. Because ultimately, they're both going to play a lot. It is a quarterback battle. They're going to probably reward one of them. I would imagine Devin Brown, just from what I've heard, that he'll get rewarded with that first snap. But it would kind of I, – I think they'd be best suited. They won't do this. To split those two up on different teams. And then it then it's a coin toss. Who mm -hmm. gets the first rep? Well, I don't know. They, they picked tails, and it was tails. So it was him. But now you're talking about offensive line issues. Are they – which one's going behind the first offensive line? So I think they'll do the offense defense like they did last year. I haven't heard if he's announced what the format is, but I would imagine that's what he's going to do. Defense is my guess for sure. And there's going to be a lot of weight into who gets that first rep because it's 
kind of a, whether it is or isn't, it'll be telling, right? Whether it is telling to who actually starts next year, there's still a whole process to go through the summer training camp in August, but people are going to pay attention to it a lot and they're going to fucking sink their teeth into it, especially media that's trying to get clicks. Do you think it'll be telling to the players? Because, I, you know, I, I worry and wonder about Ryan Day's ability to, like, manage these these kids, right? So it's like if you are Will Howard and you feel like you've had a better spring and the team feels like you've had a better spring and they try to Devin out there first, yeah. does the team look at you sideways or vice versa? Like if if Devin, <laughs> if people, if the team feels like Devin's had a better spring and they try Will out there first, is the team looking at Ryan like, oh, shit, yeah. here we go again? Yeah, they absolutely will. I mean, it's it's, it's – you gotta you gotta have have your team's trust. Yeah. And if and if you do something like that, they're gonna look at you like, whoa, what the fuck? I thought I thought the best play here. Mm-hmm. Best players play. That's supposed to be the rule, right? And if you don't put the the guy who played the best out first, then you're losing credibility. And you have to have credibility to for for team culture at at the very minimum. Last year, Ryan said that he would like to have a starter by the end of spring. Is what he like in in his mind. That was the Kyle Devin battle. Obviously, we didn't get that. We didn't even get a starter heading like into week one. one. <laughs> yeah, so it, it was chaotic. Do you think Ryan Day today, after everything you've heard, all the reports coming out, all of kind of the things that are being kind of thrown out there, do you think Ryan Day is any closer to naming a starter, or do you think this will be another one week of the Akron game? He'll announce a starter. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be mid August. Mid August, it's going to be halfway through training camp. He'll announce a starter. That's when I think he's going to do it. I think right now through spring, especially after this week, after the game, after it's done, that, you know, that chapter closes and you're on to the next chapter, he's going to see trajectories, right? And probably have a decent inkling as to who probably will win the job. But that that can, it's all fluid. It all can change. But I think at the end of spring, he'll look, reflect on it. They'll go back and watch spring cutups and say, wow, Devin really is ahead of Will Howard in this race. Now, could Will Howard hit a burst and catch him? For sure. But I believe that's what he'll, his conclusion will be, be after spring. He won't name Devin the starter. He'll just say, okay, Devin is a, is ahead of Will right now. I don't know if he'll ever say that publicly. I doubt it. But that's what I think the coaches will think. Do you think that Ryan owes full a full explanation, a full outline of where each of the quarterbacks are to the quarterbacks? Oh, yeah. Or no. Okay, because here's, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, like, if one is ahead of the other, like, if you're Ryan Day, do you go in and tell Will Howard that if he is behind, that he is behind and run the risk of losing him? Because Will's going to need some sort of assurance or guarantee before he gets Spencer Sanders. <clears throat> and so I wonder if if maybe you try to make them seem like as closer than they are so you keep Will longer, considering it's a long season and, obviously, there is a little bit of an injury background with Devin Brown. Yeah, I think, I mean, honestly, it is that marriage between transparency and recruiting because he still has to, re- we just watched it with Dallin Hayden leaving. Yeah. He still has to recruit his roster. Every time this window is coming close, it's like, fuck, we better recruit the guys that who are who are potential jumpers, right? Who are guys that might jump into the portal? Let's let's jump on them early and recruit the shit out of them to keep them here. So I think there's, it's, it's that fine line of he's got to be transparent. He's got to, he, he can't lie mm-hmm. or you're going to lose credibility with, with those players. But you also, you got to recruit them a little bit. So you might make it seem closer than it is if it's not that close. The other side of this, Chris, is players know. Like, they're watching. Not only are they watching it live, they're the ones doing it, but then they watch the film. They see grades. They see percentages, completion percentages, yards per attempt. They see all this stuff, and it's like, most players won't bury their head in the sand. They're looking at it like, damn, I am getting outperformed right now. Well, the fascinating thing that Dan presented um, r- real briefly was that this year the quarterbacks are not being graded in the spring. They're not being graded, and they don't know their grades, mm. which is a fascinating thing. And I, in my Brian Windhorn horse voice, why? <laughs> are we trying to protect somebody? <coughs> right. And that is kind of the interesting thing. And I know last but, year, Zach. But I'm going to push back, though. They're absolutely being graded. No, I'm saying graded. They just aren't given the grades. Yeah, like last year they knew the grades. Yeah. And that made the quarterback thing a little bit tricky because everyone saw one guy graded out higher than the other, but you won't name that guy the starter. This year they're being graded, but not being shared with them the grades is yeah. what it was kind of being floated out there. Make, make Makes you wonder. Also, Zach, fascinating for you. They didn't scrimmage on Saturday. Mm. Again. 
They have not had a scrimmage yet. They've just done the move it periods at the end of practices, which is a little bit more unique than we've seen in previous years. Because remember last year was, hey, I want to go live, coach, show you what I can do from Devin. And what happened? He got, got hurt. Yeah, he got injured. But still, I mean, black jersey this year. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's, that's shocking to me. Um, they didn't but I mean, on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, the move it periods matter. Yeah, I mean, those are scrimmages. When you move it mm-hmm. ones on ones, that's a, it's a mini scrimmage. Right. But I just love those. Like, you wake up and it's like a game. Mm-hmm. Right. There ain't none of that bullshit. Like, no, no, we're going to go play a game. Like, let's see how you play 50 snaps. Last year, the grumblings, the rumor was that there was not staff alignment on who the quarterback should be. Yes. Obviously. That is confirmed and factual. Hey, hey, look, I'm just saying allegedly, <laughs> you know, um, I've, I've been watching a lot of the, the P. Diddy stuff. No pause um, about like the allegations. And, you know, allegedly is what you got to say with all those. You know, I don't want to get. I don't have to say allegedly for shit. You know what? You're there right. was disagreement on the offensive staff on who the starting quarterback should be. Yeah. And obviously we know that Ryan Day maybe doesn't didn't value Corey Dennis's opinion as much as you would value a guy like Chips. If push comes to shove, if they're headbutting over this, do you think Ryan Day will concede and let Chip Kelly make the quarterback choice. No. Okay. You can't. I mean, he'll listen. He, he's known Chip since he was a kid. Like, he's going to value everything Chip says. And I, I promise you, they're going to come to the same player. Okay. Like, they're going to come to the same decision. And there's going to be heated conversation. There's going to be, you know, pushback. There's going to be devil's advocate conversations. But at the end of the day, I think they're, they're going to be on the same page with who the starting quarterback is going to be. I really hope so. There I really has hope to be. So. Because last year, the, the quarterback coach and the head coach not being on the same page on who the quarterback should be is just bad. Because like then you get a situation where both want to prove that they're right, right? And then that that leads in Ryan Day lying to us and saying that, oh, we're going to give them the equal amount of snaps in the Indiana game. And then sees Kyle McCourt struggling. And it's like, you know what? We're not going to let Devin have a chance to shine. Right. And then you get this like this big old mess. And that, I guess that that's one of my concerns. Because I, th- I could see a world where this does end up turning into the chip versus Ryan You know, one's team Devin, one's team Will, because I think, and I don't know how you feel about this, I believe that Ryan Day's biggest issue with being the head head coach at Ohio State is that he is a be right guy (laughs) instead of get it right guy. Hmm. Two very different things. Because if Devin is starting quarterback this year, Zach, that's Ryan Day essentially acknowledging to the quarterback community, to the NFL community, that last year I got it wrong, and this year I can avoid the optics of getting it wrong if Will Howard's good enough to be the guy winning at it for me. I'm with you. If, if if that makes sense. And I think I just, the way you just got an update on Dallin Hayden. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Oh my gosh, Becky. <laughs> Look at her butt, Tunchi. Um, so yeah, so that that's 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 where I'm at. Now with Will Howard, for you, do you think that if it's if the it, it, here we go? So everyone right now is kind of coming out and saying it's basically pretty even. There's been no separation. Do you think they're also doing that to avoid maybe the desperate tamper teams? Because there's a couple teams, Zach, that are out there that are going to be real desperate for a well, quarterback. Listen, we, you just you just said why that's the narrative. Because he's trying to keep both quarterbacks. Yeah. And so when the Buckeye beat is your lifeline to narratives, right? When Austin Ward gets a phone call from, from Mark Pantone or Jerry Emig or whoever the fuck he talks to, and it's like, hey, here's the situation if you want to talk about it. It's it's pretty it's pretty even right now, mm-hmm. and then there might be pushing a little like Devin is you know slightly ahead, but Will's really grown a lot. Like they're controlling the narrative, and it's self serving, right? They want all the media to talk about it that way because then it's infiltrating whoever the whoever's in second right now, their head. So when they have that conversation, they, it's like propaganda. It's it's, <laughs> it's like North Korea. We are North Korea. We are North Korea. Like. They're trying to put posters everywhere to make you believe something so that when they tell you that, you're like, oh, yeah, I've been brainwashed by all these fucking posters, and now you're telling me it. I believe you, and that's fine. That's how it works. That's what's going on. The most fascinating thing of all this, Zach, is that there's been four spring practices that people have gone to, right? And at every one of those, the media has come out afterwards and said, yeah, like, Devin's been better, but it's airtight. Yeah. So it's it's de- it's definitely weird. I do wonder if Ohio State's trying to protect Will Howard and hopefully like hope, hoping that that light switch comes on. No, they're trying to keep him. Yeah, keep him. Because you know who needs a quarterback? Iowa, Utah, Oregon State, maybe Michigan State, Notre Dame, Duke. All those schools have money. Yeah. They all need quarterbacks. 
So it's like as soon as one guy leads out in front, you know what that is? That's someone shooting the flare up in the air. We got a quarterback. Come get him. Yeah. They're going to lose one, dog. They're going to lose one. That's why I think it's so important. Well, they're definitely going to lose a quarterback. I, I would imagine in the spring the spring window. If not, definitely next fall. Yeah. No, I think they're going to lose one in the spring window, but I do think all the quarterbacks want to play in the spring. So game. who do you think that's going to be? Who do I think? If Gun to your head. Who? If a quarterback transfers April 15th, who is it? Which one? I think the safest bet for me, and since you have a gun to my head, is Lincoln Keenold. Same. Um, makes the most sense. He, he can go to, I mean, shit, Corey Dennis is at Tulsa. He can go there. I think he can go to Ole Miss and, and back up Jack Starr for a year and be the clear guy moving forward. Um, fuck, I even saw people talking about him in Iowa today. Him, re, you know, joining Caleb yeah. Brown, who former, former former Buckeye. And honestly, there he'd be probably one of the top four athletes on the team. Mm -hmm. And they got winning culture over there. Shout out Caitlin Clark, back to back finals. <laughs> LeBron on the on that 07 team. Uh, Zach, I just want to throw up this Jeremiah Smith catch because of how absurd it is. And I yes. talked to a player and he said, there's no way you can keep him off the field because he's doing this now every practice. Cue it, Pat. Dog, that's stupid. nuts. Stupid catch. I mean, the kid has ridiculous hands and ball skills. CJ Barnett. <laughs> <laughs> I got it on replay. Just because yeah. this is a disgusting catch. Um, and I will set the record straight. <coughs> Do you want to guess who threw, who threw that ball? Um, I don't know. You could just tell me. Lincoln Keenholz threw the ball. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it was one of those, got the play call, looked over to Jeremiah like he's going yeah. to Throw it to him. Yeah, I'm throwing it to him. It's a fade in the red zone. What else yeah. are you going to do? I'm sure the coaches are like, no, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> he went for the back shoulder throw. Jeremiah Smith got that one-handed stickies. Yep. Hell of a catch. The kid's going to be a freak. The kid's a freak. The kid is a freak, but he's going to be a, a, an unreal player. Can I mention the conversation me, you, and Philly had over the yeah. weekend? Me, you, and Philly talked. And ideally, I think the most upside lineup that we all kind of agreed with, all three of us, is Jeremiah at the X, Carnell Tate at the Z, Ennis in the slot. That lineup gives you so much. Give me the South Florida lineup. I think a Mecca's wide receiver four. I think <laughs> Carnell Tate at the Z is something I hadn't thought of until I asked you and Philly, and you both kind of oh, yeah. quick to me. Love that. And he was an X last year backup. So I, I just – I don't know. And I, I don't want to throw, you know – a Mecca out for the new shiny things, but I'm, I'm having a really tough time no. figuring this rotation. Well, it's, out. it's all about Brandon Ennis. I think honestly, if you want my honest opinion, I think a Mecca is going to be wide receiver three. That's that. I think Jeremiah is going to be better than him. I think that Carnell Tate is going to be better than him. I would contend he might've been better than him last year. And then I think it's all about who's better a Mecca or Brandon Ennis. The good thing is a Mecca is a really good player. And he's also very versatile. He could play all three positions. So, I think he, they have a plethora of riches in zone six. What does Jack Harlow say? They got options. <laughs> they could pass that bitch like Stockton. You got me? Yeah. I'm feeling real cool. I feel like a rapper with these glasses on, bro. I can't see shit. <laughs> but uh, but we're, we're getting this thing going. Um, where are we at? Uh, oh, yeah. We're right here. Um, Speed, thanks for the five. Chris, <laughs> funny you mentioned pay for play a little bit ago because not sure if you remember, but we when you were on OVE, I asked how long till pay for play starts in NIL. Yeah, I think we're three years out. Yeah. Max. Yeah. This is going to be TV revenue sharing. There are going to be employees of the university. There's going to be regulations, rules that they can actually enforce because it's not an amateur that's just making uh, money off their name, image, and likeness. Like it's. They're going to have to get their hands around it, and it's going to happen. And I don't know how long it's going to take them, but should have happened yesterday. Percy, thanks for the five. My guys, what up? I never really paid attention to 7v7 football until they had it on NFL Network this past weekend. That shit was lit. That was the OT7. Yeah. And we're working on our team. Working on launching a team. Yep. And if when we do, I'm not going to say if. When we do, it's popping. It's going to be gone. Dylan, thanks for the five. Down Hayden will be the Ohio State running back in 2025. Return like Michi. I hate to bring it to you. I don't. I will put a zero percent chance on that. Oh, you just got a text, so I believe you. Dallin Hayden. Dallin Hayden was only still at Ohio State because Tony Alford was there. Mike, thank you for the five. If Will Howard can't throw downfield, throw the whole QB away. I just need a guy. I, I just want. I just want to have a good quarterback. I don't care who it is. I believe that pushing the ball downfield is more important than having a running quarterback. Oh, for sure. That's my belief. Well, no, I'm kind of alone on that hill. <laughs> so it's a wee hill. Rose, thanks for the five. Late for WrestleMania, but menace mania. Zach, Chris, Paris Johnson Jr. versus Aiden Hutchison, Blake Corum, handicap tag team match live at the Menace Dome. Man, how are you going to do Paris like that? 
Like Chris and I are getting our ass beat by Aiden Hutchinson and Blake Corum's big asses. Hey, bro, I know y'all saw Speed go to the hospital. I'm just saying, like, and then Paris Johnson's like a sacrificial lamb. He's got to take down both of them. Unless it's three on two. I know it is three on two. No, he's talking about a tag team. Like, we got to tag in and out? No. Oh. Three on two, we got a shot. Tag team? We're cooked. Yeah, I'm about to bring a blicky to the to Mad Menace Mania. <laughs> I'm about to bring a blicky in the trap. Rod Farmer, thanks for the five. NAIA just banned trans athletes competing in women's sports in a unanimous vote. Other Another dub for female athletes. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's the most asinine thing going on right now that, that – there's people that actually think that dudes with dicks should be playing women's sports. I have two daughters. I promise you, my daughter's getting pulled off the court. Like, the fuck is wrong with us? We're mentally ill. We're fucking just... It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. These girls are, like, breaking legs and wrestling and fucking... It's like, what are we doing? This shitty male swimmer's gonna go win a gold? In the, it's like, what? No. No. I'm not. I'm not going for it. You, y'all can have your own little society where where dudes can beat up on girls in sports. Fuck off. Not I'm not a part of it. Ray Charles. Keel, thanks for the two. Did you see the video of Meek doing bunny hops? I did not. I honestly don't want any more of my view of Meek Mill to be destroyed. <laughs> I'm cool. I just want to almost like, I want one of the men in black to come out with that little uh, beep. Be so I can go listen to Dreams and Nightmares and act like nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, feel, you know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> Quiz Duo, thanks for the two. NFL.com has Spencer Rattler to the Giants. It, I, again, I would rather be called the hard R in the grocery store than have that happen. I would rather someone loogie on me as I'm trying to pick out a tomato. Like, if you guys hate me, just say that. I don't got to do it through, you know, Spencer subtle, Rattler and JJ McCarthy's. Right? right, the subtle jabs. <laughs> right, like... <laughs> Like, my goodness gracious, just tell me where you stand in all this. Right. Zach, 2019 spring game, got something for you. <laughs> Justin Fields started out three for 10 before having the 98-yard bomb to Benjamin Victor. Matt Baldwin went 20 for 36 and ended up transferring a couple of weeks later. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> take spring games with a grain of salt. I know we all love football. I know that the fan base is passionate, and you just want to be excited to be excited. Yeah. But take the spring game with a grain of salt. The spring game celebrities are real. Dog, here's what's going to happen. That little white kid from Medina is about to go crazy in the spring. He's going to house a slant, the walk-on that just lost his black stripe. Yeah. And then he's going to get an offer to uh, to go to Penn State. <laughs> or like, yeah. Or I mean, Akron. I mean, I like Penn State better since his former quarterback is there. And honestly, bro, I think this spring game is going to be the uh, – it's going to be like the buffet, right? It's like all the young guys that play, it's like go shopping. And, and no, I don't know if you know, but at Michigan, there's some concern that they might lose their two deep, that they might – their their uh, their depth might get stripped after their spring game. Like so, with transfers or what? Yeah, like people like – like coming in and, and going and pulling their young players out of there. So I do, I do wonder and, and worry, but Zach, I got nothing else left for today, man. Good little Monday show, kick it off spring game week. And we're going to really kick it off with the spring game preview show live at Yogi's on Friday. Doors open at 11. Don't be late. It's good. It, the seats are going to run out yeah, like honestly, really, really fast. There early. Like treat it like a shoe release, treat it like a movie release. Man, especially if it's nice out. Let's check mm-hmm. the weather real quick, Chris. I mean, it's supposed to be pretty nice all week. If it's nice, shit, pull up early Friday. Yeah, 53 and rainy. That kind of sucks. But we'll be inside, so fuck it. Pull up. Come hang out. Yogi's on hard road. Don't go to the wrong one. So Yogi's in Dublin on hard road. Doors open at 11. We go live at noon. We'll be hanging out afterwards. We appreciate you, Menace Army.